<clears throat> this is going to be a very short uh, end to this section on the Great War. And we'll end up going into some more details on specific aspects of the consequence of this. But the Great War in the Middle East is very significant to what's going on now. Much of the conflicts we see going on in the Middle East are actually not so much the product of ancient tribal or religious tensions as much as unresolved issues that come from this time period. So if you see this picture of the man here to the left, this is Lawrence uh, of Arabia. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but it's a very long film. By the way, there's, I don't think there's one woman shot in the film, and it's like three hours long or something. Anyways. Um, but he convinced the Arabs that were a part of the Ottoman Empire, in other words, the Turkish Islamic Kingdom, that their independence from the Turks would be a good thing. So he kind of helped foster Arab nationalism um, in the provinces that were under Turkish control, which was basically the Middle East. And the Arabs believed that they were going to get independence through the help of the Allies. The reality is, is that the French and the British had plans to carve up the Middle East and according to their interests with the fall of the Ottoman Empire. The Turks are going to make the, the Ottoman Empire is going to make the very uh, critical decision to join the, um, to not join the, the British and the French and the Americans, but they're going to decide with Germany and all of their uh, uh, crew, and it is going to be the end of the Ottoman Empire, okay? And so the Ottoman Empire is going to fall as a consequence of World War One. So um, I'm going to talk about in the next lecture uh, the Russian Revolution, which is also a consequence of World War One. So we also see one of the consequences is the fall of the Ottoman Empire and the stage of European um, occupation of the Middle East. At the time, you had Palestine that was uh, here, then put under the British mandate after the end of the war. And, of course, eventually there's going to be a war between Arabs and Jews coming in from Europe that are going to have the Israel-Palestine conflict, which we'll go into later. But even if you look, I want to show you Kuwait here. Um... This was carved out as its own country by Sir Percy Cox, um, and it did not gain independence until 1961. It also landlocks the rest of Iraq. So you have um, you you have the issues of Kuwait and Iraq that goes back to the first Gulf War. Really go back to sentiments about the um, Iraqi nationalists over the nature of the independence of Kuwait. And then in the northern part, up here, this was all Kurdistan, and this gets carved up, and the Kurds get broken up into different branches, and that creates a whole other set of problems. Um, so, yeah, um, very significant. And then last, the bells rang throughout Europe and the U.S. at 11 a.m. on November 11th of 1918, excuse me, heralding the end of the war. Gosh, hold oh, belch. 37 million wounded are killed over this. So again, what's the consequence uh, of this? Um, I'm, I can't remember right now if I'm going to be talking about it in other lectures, but to say the surrealist movement, much of the, the counterculture kind of anti-civilization movement that comes out of Europe is going to be a result of World War I. Communist revolution, first ever in history that uh, on that kind of scale, um, is going to be a consequence of World War I. The Ottoman Empire uh, is going to fall apart as a consequence of World War I. And then we're going to see that the peace that happens after Treaty of Versailles is the next great tragedy out of this war. Um, and so 
and it's going to have a great, you know, it, it really affected, you know, we're used to hearing about the Treaty of Versailles and the way it affected Germany. But later we're going to talk about how it affected um, all of these um, other non-European nations who participated and thought that they were going to get independence or be free and in reality like democratic nations were going to keep they're going to divide up the spoils of war and keep colonies subjugated so for another topic but this will be the end then of this section